Mark Tatum, Deputy Commissioner and COO of the National Basketball Association. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here with you all. Dr. Richard Lapchick, thanks for being with us here on R&R on Sports. Thank you for having me. Civil rights icon, Dr. Edwards, how are you today? I'm doing a heck of a lot better than I deserve, I'll tell you that. Sports commentator, Scoop Jackson. Good to be back on with you all. Ken Griffey Jr., how are you today, sir? I'm good. How about you guys? It's R&R on Sports. R&R on Sports. R&R on Sports. Hello and welcome to R&R on Sports. I'm Howard Robertson. And I am the most marvelous, the anomalistic, atypical, outstanding, unconventional, Larry Robinson! Yeah! Larry Robinson. So, hey man, you know what? Okay, I so last week, love. last week, last week you were a homorphodite. No, <laughs> and <laughs> this week you are animalistic. No, is I'm, that what it is? Anomalistic. I'm an anomalistic. Animal- That's what I said. Anom- animalistic. Listen, the, I, la- uh, the ladies, especially the misses, might say I'm animalistic. Animalistic. Okay. Yeah, she okay. might say I'm. An yeah, 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 she might say I'm. She animalistic. might say you're. Yeah. A- Am Afro? <laughs> what, what were you last week? Amorphic, 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 amorphodidic, whatever. Man, you crazy? What's happening now? Everything's good, man. How are you, man? I'm wonderful, man. Good, I'm good, wonderful, good, good, but good, good, um, good, good, good. I'm concerned for our country. Your heart man. is heavy, isn't it? Uh huh. Yeah, man, man, you know. Uh, let me switch. What do you what bit. What are you concerned about? Well, you know, <laughs> it's I, and I'm saying that. Uh, facetiously Facetiously as hell Yes, yes. Um, Man This it's, it's, it's is This is A lot man I mean it's a lot yeah, It's man, a lot I'm happening. like for real folks It's a lot Y'all happening really don't give a About us For real Is it what Is that what it is can, can Seven look. times in the back Really Yeah Is that what it is Straight up Close range Is that what it is Okay. Holding, holding the man's shirt. Man, now, dude, if come on, yeah, come on, man. yeah, come and on. then now, come on, man, come on. Man. Also, come on. You also, recent- no, no, nothing human, nothing human could be in you at all, right? If you find any justification in that, something is wrong with you. Something is very, very wrong with you. And if you go to church, you need to really consider what kind of church you go to. I'm sorry. Man. So let me I, I let me I, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What are your initial thoughts on um, how or if sports should be affected by what's happening in our country? Listen, considering that we are we black men mm-hmm. are the entertainment. And professional sports. Making up the prof- yeah. making up when the, the predominance the, the, the of the, the census yeah. Of, yeah, yeah. So of you got, professional you, you sports. You got the NBA. Right. 70%. You got the NFL. Okay. Somewhere around 78%. Okay. We not are, as not as much in the uh, So you MLB. like looking at us. You like looking at us as for entertainment, but you don't look at us as human. You don't look at us as families. You don't look at us as families. You don't look at us as people. And man, I got a problem with that, bro. Okay, I got a problem okay. with that, bro. Okay, I, I mean, want to know. Can't, we can't. This is this is real, man. Well, we're gonna talk about it more. We're gonna talk about it more when we come back after this break. But I, I, I wanna, I really wanna hear where your head is and hear what you're thinking about relative to how Tired. or if it should impact sports. No, 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 no. It already, no, no, no. Is, it already we, is. It should impact. It sports already is because because we see ourselves. We see ourselves, man. That's George Absolutely. Floyd is me. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll Tamir be back. Rice is my kid. Dude. We'll be back for more R and R on Sports after this. No, and I'm not alluding to the president being a nut. I really am not. No, you're not alluding no, to no, it. I'm you're not. saying it, basically. <laughs> well, well, I, 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 and I'm not comparing him to Hitler or Mussolini, but you have these people who are homegrown. So why'd you even bring him up? Okay, I'm going to let that go. Go back. Go ahead and corner. I mean, I mean, this I mean, is really getting walking. Why, why I don't do want to call the president well, that's, a nut. No, that's why you... And our personal friends. You don't want to call... Uh, I, I've been to the I've been to the, uh, to the the Trump Tower, and I've had my golden shower. Oh, wow. Go ahead. Wow. Okay. <laughs> 
funking up your airwaves and jamming the good information in your ear. Once again, it's Funky Politics. Hello? You got the Reverend Green online, baby. Uh, hello, hello, Reverend Green. This is Don Sterling. Sterling? Uh, let me see. Other than the Sterling Silver, which you know I love, and got tons of it, baby, I don't know no Sterlings. I'm Donald Sterling. Out in L.A., I used to own the Clippers. Oh, my goodness. The one who said those awful things about my friend Magic Johnson and about all those black folks? That Sterling? Well, well I, I, I guess that would be me. But, but Reverend, please understand, the media made me look like a horrible person. I, I, but I'm really not like that. I, 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 I like you people. So much so that, that I'm getting married again, and, and my sweet chocolate drop is a colored girl. You know what they say about going black. <laughs> I, I wish I could give you a high five on that one. <laughs> I, I must get you to sing at our wedding, Reverend. My little chocolate bunny would be so happy if you would. Well, well, let me tell you one thing, Sterling. You need prayer, baby. You've got too much nerve calling me uh, after what you said. Do you know I marched with Martin and Malcolm was a good friend of mine, too? Wonder what they would say about the terrible things you said and done to our people. And you asking me? To come out there and sing from my heart just like everything is forgotten? Baby, you've got to be crazy. Well, well, well Reverend, I guess that's, that's what I'm asking. But, but it's only two songs. And, and what would you say to 750000 plus expenses, of course? Love and happiness. Well... Entrepreneurs should check out Grindset because these are the stories of entrepreneurs told in the most raw, unassuming, and honest ways. And every episode, you will hear things that you didn't know that will no longer scare you, and you will feel encouraged to take your entrepreneurial journey because these are entrepreneurial heroes, and they'll show you the way. In the face of the violence that we've been uh, experiencing for the past 400 years, is actually doing our people a disservice. In fact, it's a crime. It's a crime. Here come the drums. Back for more R and R on sports. Say his name, uh, Jacob Blake. Say his name, Jacob Blake. All right, all right. So we're gonna let's let's back up a little bit, and then we're gonna move forward to that. But tell me what you think, George Floyd. Tell me what you think Sandra about. Bland. Tell me what you think about um, Roger Goodell um, finding uh, religion, finally seeing the light, uh, and admitting that he was wrong, the NFL was wrong, and Colin Kaepernick was correct. Man, I just think it's about time. I appreciate the fact that. You know, he's willing to say, damn, I was wrong. You know, that you know, that's a lot. I do think, do you? Do yeah, you or think, or do you lot, look at it really, like, well, you I, know what now? It, man, is it too little is it too little too late and it's, and, it's and too, far it's, after the it's, fact? It's too little too late, way, way, way the after the man's fact. career is the man's yeah, career you know, is destroyed. This man's career. So so now let's let's see what you do now. Because man, I'm 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 at this point. I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear what you think and what you feel. I don't want to hear that. I want to see what you do. Mm -hmm. It's Mm -hmm. rubber meets the road. I'm Mm -hmm. so proud of these young men in the NBA that have literally boycotted. Because I thought that should have happened. It has begun. That, now, I by the time you hear this, happened. it might be continuing, but, but it has a boycott in the has NBA. Begun. Has begun. So, 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 you know, when when Rogers when Sterling, you know, mm-hmm. um, out of the Clippers, um, I thought that should have been nah, man, we ain't doing this no more. And I think you know, um, it's time, man. It's it, it's time for us to really stand up for our humanity because that's really all it's about, man. Is I'm a human being. Mm-hmm. We got kids and 
uncles and aunties, man. My aunt, my uncle was just assassinated in in Louisville, Kentucky. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm hurting. And it's like, I, I don't even know what emotions to feel. I don't I, I don't even know what emotions to feel anymore. At the hand of at the hands of police? No. No, okay. wasn't at the hands of police and um and um, you know, um but it's the fact that he's still gone. Oh, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. He's still yeah, gone yeah. and uh and um it's that life. But 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 we're here for sports and and um Yeah, we like, are here. Like said, we are here for sports and, and that, that great segue into what I would like uh this theme basically to be and it could be extended but I want to know, and, and, and we've got a great guest on today, and um, yeah, uh, we're going to get him talking about this. But I want to know how the NBA is going to handle. Here's my question. How is the NBA going to handle the NBA? Let me translate. How is the National Basketball Association going to handle national black anger? That is the question. It is. It it, it cannot be. It cannot be uh, Howard, any any better. More. Any better uh, example of of the level of anger than with you. See, I mean, this this is you know, anger. See, you can call it ex- ang- the other. The A could be also be anxiety, but more than being anxious about this, black folk are. Mad black folk are ang- angry. I'm angry, man. I know because I am. Yeah, I am. Because you know, at my age and stage of life, you know, we've I've seen it all before, and I haven't seen it get any better. And for generations behind me, I am angry that they, you, uh, my children, my grandchild, have to deal with this, with SOS, same old stuff, SOS. You know, I'd, it, I'd have a I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You can substitute. I'd have a different, I'd have a different one, man. You, it would, uh, uh, for the last S? For the last I, S. I, 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 I get it, I get it. But you're on national radio, man. You gotta, well, you know, you I, gotta, I'm mad, man. We I'm do hurt. have, we I'm have hurt, protocols. Man. We have I'm protocols. hurt, man. I really am, man. I'm, I'm, I'm not hurt. It's so beyond, it's, so it's, it's it's beyond hurt. It's like, man, y'all really, really, really. You know, I think back to there's a restaurant in Memphis, Tennessee, and it's owned by a lady that's from Kentucky, and she talked about Colin Kaepernick. She talked about him because he kneeled, and I said, and I and I really thought a lot of her, mm-hmm. and I said. You know, that could be me that he's kneeling for. And she she talked about it from the standpoint no, of being and, disrespectful yeah, to the flag yeah, and she all was, that. Yeah, that, yeah, all yeah. That stuff. And but this is a person who, when she was having problems with her kids, she called me. Mm-hmm. When she was having problems with her her people, or when she was having problems at the house, she called me. Mm-hmm. So it was okay as a black man. To help, mm-hmm. help her situation. Mm-hmm. But when it came to my humanity, there was, was no empathy. She was no, was no, no empathy. empathy, no, 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 even concern. No, no, like Larry, I, I just want to understand what you're talking about. Have you had any conversations since no, recently, or no, y'all no, just quit no, talking? Did I, y'all just quit talking all quit together? Talking all together. Oh, and oh, I've never okay. been back to the restaurant. Okay, um, I, you know. Um, yeah, I just I can't, I can't. It's Interesting, because you don't love me. You gotta love me. I don't give a damn. You gotta love me. You gotta <laughs> so, love me. If you are gonna get my money, you gotta love me. You gotta love me like I love people, and ain't nobody can say that I don't love people. So I love people and treat everybody with respect and and love and and like I said, man, you 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 got to love me. So. um Speaking of love, there's not much love lost between 
um, Jason Whitlock and uh, LeBron. LeBron came out and um, there's a lot of people that made their living on, on LeBron. Hmm? LeBron needs a check. Jason, Skip Bayless, those two folks, mm -hmm. y'all need to take a percentage of your check and send it to LeBron. He called LeBron uh, a racist. He called LeBron, which is really impossible. Man, I ain't, I ain't he a, called I'm LeBron not gonna dignify. I'm not. He called LeBron a anything. liar when LeBron said that. Um, he and he was talking about the general. Uh, he he was talking about black folks are. Um, Where is angry, his journalism angry school? And hmm? where is Jason Whitlock's journalism school? Because he's been making millions for a minute. He made millions when he created Undefeated, the undefeated site for ESPN. He made millions. I know he did. Um, he's made millions going to Fox. But where's his journalism school? See, I look at the fruit. I don't see anything that Jason Whitlock's done. And I'm not and I'm not saying. What do you mean his journalism school? Where is his cause cause LeBron has a charter school. LeBron oh, has a charter school. Oh, LeBron what is, has a charter school. I mean, what is, has he done? Right, right. Okay. Where your fruit? Okay, give me your fruit, okay. brother. Okay. So, so you can talk about LeBron all you want, but you got to put up something. And like I said, I don't know how many students is there a Jason Whitlock uh, scholarship for black students at Ball State University? I don't know. Probably not. So don't don't come to me with that because LeBron got an agreement with Akron where <laughs> kids that go through his program get to get college for free. So, hey, man, come All on right. now. You got to come with it. All right. So um, how will the NBA handle the NBA? Uh, listen, that's listen. our topic and theme today. And today we have talk about the, our, our guest. We got a good friend. Be on uh, a good friend of mine who is I'm seeing coming up. He's doing some great work. Um, Scoop B, Brandon, Scoop B Robinson. Um, he works for Heavy.com right now. He's a basketball insider. Robinson, Robinson. This your cousin? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, man, he's my cuz. Okay. So okay. listen, man, don't don't hate on the brother because he's the real deal. And um, I appreciate the fact that him coming through and talking a little hoop with him. All with right. Us. All right. All right. Brandon, Scoop B Robinson. Here with us on r and our on Sports. Stay with us. He'll be here on the other side of this. Get trusted. Get trusted. Get trusted. Get trusted. Riffin' on jazz. When two friends get together to kick it. About jazz, it's called Riffin' on Jazz. Catch us Riffin' on Jazz every week right here on your favorite broadcast or podcast platforms. Riffin on Jazz on the Kazookian Network. Kazookian! Freedom of speech, it's freedom of death. We got to fight the powers that be. Fight the power! Fight the power! Fight the power! Welcome back to r and r on Sports. And of course, you were a little late. I was a little late, yeah, but it was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was yeah. a pregnant pitched, pause. Pitched very, it was a, very it was a pregnant pause. You know, you've you been noticed? rather strange lately, man. man. It was a pregnant you, pause. It was, it was you called added yourself to, a Luddite. No, nah, no, nah, nah, Luddite. See, that's what yeah. you call me. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, no. Hedomorphic. Yeah, had, yeah, had, yeah, had yeah, 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 yeah. So that means I'm just now, Morphodetic, and see. then you called yourself animalistic at the beginning of the show. Well, that's because so that's, that's what the ladies say. bad going on with you. Say, it's going bad, some bad going say. on. But listen, 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 we are happy to have with us a um, an American sports writer, journalist, sports analyst, columnist, editor, podcast host, senior writer, and all of that stuff right here with us on R and R on sports. Man, we easy, are talking easy about thing easy to say is a basketball NBA insider. Okay. Just say that. Yeah. Come on, say. say basketball. Say basketball. Basketball. NBA. NBA. Okay, NBA. I, basketball you, do you remember what inside. you said yourself? Basketball. NBA basketball I'm just going to say welcome, brother Brandon. Scoop B. <laughs> Robinson. Welcome to r and on Sports, man. Gentlemen, what's going on? Everything's okay. I'm, I apologize for that crazy round the way introduction but you know what i'm dealing with here. i didn't know if you were talking about solid liquid gases amorphous <laughs> oh, what? amphibians man i wasn't the best science student so you lost me no, man, <laughs> glad to have okay. you happy okay. to have you we 
we going to skip right on to the real <laughs> stuff, man. Dude. The, no, no, the no, Bucks, no, no, the, no, the no, 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 no. We're not going to start there. Let's okay. start. Give okay. the man respect. Let's start, man, because we, we're not going to assume See, that man, our I'm audience excited. knows excited. every, well, calm yourself. We're not going to be, um, we're not going to um, take for granted that our audience knows who you are. So give us some back. That's what we always do, man. Um, give us, uh, give our audience some background and context about who Scoop B really is. Well, I'm not new, um, but many people are starting to pay attention to the things that I do say. Mm -hmm. Uh, I am Brandon Scoopy Robinson. My mother named me Brandon Robinson, um, and uh, I'm a senior writer at Heavy.com, and I host the Scoop B Radio podcast, which garnered uh, 2.1 million streams last year. Wow. Uh, has had anybody from Shaq, Charles Barkley, the voice of Siri, Mark Cuban, DJ Khaled, and more on the podcast. And um, yeah, man, I, I break stories. I, I, I have insight. I, I have relationships, but more than anything else, I love what I do. I love the game so of basketball. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me kind of give America an understanding of who this brother was. So, before LeBron announced that he was going back to Cleveland from Miami, mm -hmm. everybody's wondering where he was doing. Mm -hmm. We talked to Brandon. Scoop said, "Listen, my sources say he going back to Cleveland." And this was like two, three weeks before he made the announcement. Mm -hmm. I'm like, come on, man. Nah, ain't no way he's going back to Cleveland. After, after, after my man talked about him so disrespectfully, there's no way in the world that he's going back to Cleveland. And what happened? <laughs> this brother. This brother right here. <laughs> he Brandon. Scoop B. Robinson. Larry, I hear what you're saying. LeBron going back to Cleveland. Cleveland. Go ahead, brother. I told you he was going back to L. He was going to L.A. in 2018. I told you about Space Jam. I told you about Kyrie going yep. to the Brooklyn Nets. I told yep. you about yep. a lot of different things. I've been wrong too. Uh, I told everybody that KD was going to L.A. and that kind of changed and shifted some things. But I also told you Anthony Davis was joining the Los Angeles Lakers. Last I checked, he's a Laker. So mm -hmm. I, uh, okay, I hear so, things. <laughs> so, so listen, we got a we got a true NBA insider on on our own sports. And I'll just ask you, Brandon, um, what are we looking at, man? How is the NBA? Well, go ahead. Well, how'd it go? Okay, so so we decided that the theme of this show is going to be, and the question that we are asking you is, how does the NBA handle the NBA? Let me translate that. How does the National Basketball Association handle the National Black? anger wow that's a that's or a or anxiety um i mean i think it comes down to a conversation i remember and i think it's deeper than just x's and o's in basketball uh, larry i saw that you were uh, enjoying a beverage and right before well today was a day off for me and right. uh a friend of mine works at a tj friday he said come on in lunch is on me and I got your text message, and it's number one, it's cool to sit and talk with you, but it's funny that you bring that up, because while I'm sitting eating my late lunch, my phone is going off. I'm like, what is going on? Right. And then I start making phone calls, and I think the, 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 the reason why I'm bringing it up that way is I think um, it goes to an age-old thing that I've often heard people say. I was one of four black kids in my graduating high school class, uh, and, and, and I went to prep school, and I used Where? to tell people in my class, what you say? Where? Where? Don Bosco Prep High School. Where is that? It is in northern New Jersey. Okay. Man, he's and, been at it since he was like 12 okay. years old, been an NBA reporter. And what I'll say is, um, I used to say this to some of my classmates, the way to address racism or to combat it is a conversation. Because whenever you sit around with people who look different than you, you already have preconceived notions. And so I think that, number one, people thought that resuming the, the NBA play and going into the bubble uh, was going to serve as a way to bring some sort of awareness. You saw people wearing jerseys. You saw people, you know, during Zoom calls saying, um, you know, the death of Breonna Taylor, I will not rest until the cops who killed Breonna Taylor is arrested. And then you have Mr. Blake in the Milwaukee, Wisconsin area uh, shot seven times by cops. 
Um, in answer to your question, I think a conversation has to take place. It's more than Kyle Korver and J.J. Redick wearing Black Lives Matters on the back of their jerseys. I don't have a problem with either one of them. I think they're both fine human beings. Um, but, I, but I think doing it for um, a smile or for an effect or for a post on social media, um, I, I think there's more to it than that. And I think that the players realize their worth. Because if the players decide that they don't want to play anymore, realistically, the Players Association and the owners can't come to an agreement the owners could rip up the collective bargaining agreement. And I think one of the things that was smart was they played those eight exhibition games because if the NBA did not resume play, they would have lost $2 billion. So really? Yeah. That was the figure that I got a little bit. Unpack that a little bit, Brandon. Well, what happens is at the beginning of the year, you know, the, the teams and the, and the players association and, you know, they've agreed on half the money goes to whatever it goes to. You don't get the rest of the money until I believe it's 70 games that's played. So once they got to that point where 80, where eight, those eight games were played, they fulfilled the money, those seeding games that they like, if they did, they went straight to the playoffs or straight to the finals, it wouldn't work. So the fact that they played those eight games, even with the Sacramento's, the Phoenix Suns is the, the Washington Wizards, they fulfilled that obligation. So in essence, they needed to do those eight games. They had to. Wow. Yeah. So how now does Brandon, that affect the television money? I'm not a, I'm not an uh, economist, but the way that it was shared to me from somebody from the league was basically, you know, you do all this television, con- these television networks do these contracts and basically uh, they spend a ton of money for the rights to these games. So like you have your regional networks, like locally for me, yes, network, the Nets play on that MSG network, right. the Knicks play on that. But then at the same time, you, you know, you look at Fox sports, you know, um, Orlando where the magic play and all these other things, you have those games that the teams, you know, play on, but then you have the national games on ESPN, right. ABC, right. TNT. You know what you should have said to him, uh, Scoop B is uh, <laughs> when he asked you to break that down, you should have said two comma, and then nine zeros. <laughs> <laughs> I like him. That's what you should have told, you should have told me. So That was two that, billion that, reasons. That breaks they it had down. two billion yeah. reasons yeah. for that decision. Two, a comma, and nine zeros. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I want to I get back, and we got to cut to, to a, a break shortly, but I want to get back to what you said about a conversation. And when we come back, I want you to answer these two things. One. A conversation, uh, first of all, understanding that hatred dies very, very hard. So what kind of conversations? Wait, what, what the damn two are, questions, man? Okay, here are the, the two questions. The two I'm two getting questions. there. Damn. I'm getting there. If you you taking a long way around the corner. Come on, man. Boy, I do not <laughs> like you. Don't like you. I never did, really. I don't know why I fool with you every week. But anyway, so um, one part of it is... Um, will a conversation, the question is, will a conversation address just pure hate? Second question is a conversation between whom? And we going to, don't, don't, don't answer yet. We will okay. be back. With more. See, R&R see that's the problem. Sports. That's the problem. After the, the, this. Damn, the damn question sounded like it was a six part question instead of a two part question, but we still got it in. Listen, this is R&R on Sports, and I'm here with Nostradamus of Asking Questions. You are retarded. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> Don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. <laughs> we are on a new network. We're, I heard that. Yeah, For we're on, yeah, we're on this new network called Kudzuki, and I know it's a crazy name. It's like sounds the like kudzu, right? Yeah, which like is the grass. a parasitic flower. There you go. We for the kid of the game, killing this game. I am Marcus Seabear. Okay, uh, I do the comics corner, Star Wars, Star Trek, Buck Rogers. All righty. Show my age on that one. My name is Cardi B and I'm from the phone. <laughs> no, we're not for real. My name is Kimber. I love pins. I love books. 
That is what I bring to the show, as well as cuss words for these raggedy Black Nerd Power on the Kazookian Network. R&R on Sports. 1968 Olympian Dr. John Carlos. Oh, man, it's an honor. They need to pick up their radio and tune you guys in. <laughs> there you go. It's R&R on Sports. R&R. Back for more R and R on sports. Got the pre- pleasure and privilege of talking to Brandon Scoop B. Robinson. Man, your uh, lips got the way on that one a little bit. You not like trying, yours. You not trying, like you yours. You trying to too. say not it. Like you was getting too. it out though. I got it out. I was wondering. I about got you. it. I wasn't I was trying to throw your life preserver. Scoop B. I was going to throw your life preserver to help you. Thank you. As my daddy used to say, "Help the bear." You see me in a bear fight. Help the bear. I don't need it because you ran. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I'm gone. Because I'm gone. So look. Um, so we're talking about we're talking about basically how the NBA National Basketball Association will handle can handle uh, national black anger or angst or anxiety or whatever the A is that applies to you if you happen to be black and that uh, that word. <laughs> <laughs> so all of that. So you said you said conversations. No, I get it. I get it in he, in, in he an environment say, he like didn't say conversate. Yeah, sations. I said sations. Yeah, yeah, no, said, it's not a converse. It's not a verb. It's, a converse. it's not a verb. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you from Louisville? It is a verb. Yeah, yeah we're gonna Louisville, conversate. We're gonna, 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 gonna conversate about some things. So anyway, look, man. Um, yeah, I mean, it, within the realm of, of, of the environment like your school that you mentioned, yeah, I get it. But we are talking about a national platform. Mm-hmm. We're talking about the NBA. Can we let, can we let Brandon talk it all, man? <laughs> Damn. I mean, you like, take it up with the question. Hey, Brandon, listen. The NBA, how they going to deal with the NBA? The National Black Anger. The NBA, the National Basketball Association, dealing with National Black Anger. Go. The conversation that they're going to have this afternoon or this evening in Orlando is going to be a players only uh, discussion about what they actually want to do. Um, and I think that's separate from what the owners want. Because what do you, the think, own- what do you think that's going to be? Where or What's when? Your insight? What do you think that uh, what do you think it is they want to do? I think it's a carryover from the conversation that a lot of players, both in the NBA and the WNBA, had on Zoom call. Um, months ago, uh, when Kyrie Irving and Chris was Paul Kyrie right was Kyrie right? Yeah, Should he was right the whole playing? time. Should they? I mean, I heard uh, what is it, George uh, Hill, basically say we shouldn't be here any damn way. Well, here's the thing. That's a two part answer. It's not. It's not a just a simple yes or no, and I'll tell you why. Um, when you look at the perspective of the players not getting sick and people being there. I think the NBA did a heck of a job yeah. um, and making sure that, that, yes, that, yeah. that so like that's why I can't just say yes, yes or no. Kyrie was right. Yes. Will the player say yes? Here's where it gets interesting and dicey. Um, the argument of players can do both right now is kind of like eh, because the distraction that was created it's taken away from the topic at hand. If you turn on the local news, we're not looking at protests anymore. Does that mean protests aren't still existing? Right. You know, so you protest to bring awareness. But if basketball is being played and we're paying attention to whether the Lakers were going to close out with the Blazers tonight or whether Luka Doncic was going to get revenge in the series against the Clippers, where does that fit with Breonna Taylor? Where does that fit with Jacob Blake? Where does that fit with some with George Floyd and some of the other things? So I feel like awareness is cool. Wearing names on the backs of the jerseys are cool, and everybody has a different perspective. You know, I talked to Mark Cuban about it uh, last month, and one of the things he said was he thinks that 
it's good. It's for a good cause. It's good for a good conversation. And, you know, hopefully, you know, things will change. But and, and irrespective to what Mark said, OK, so how does it change? Right. Right. Are we saying it just because it's a buzzword, buzzword, just like inclusion is a buzzword, diversity is a buzzword, because if we don't change it, it's going to be business as usual. Mm-hmm. So I, I think these are the type of conversations they're going to have. And I think that the players are, are using their power in a way that they've always had. They've always they're making had. the money for the owners. Right. Exactly. Well, yeah. And, and of course, I think that it's even further indication that they are subject to uh, the here and now, what's happening here and now. For example, they're in a bubble. If there is, if somebody tests positive uh, for COVID and they haven't uh, to this point, but if somebody did, then their reality changes immediately. The um, thing that happened in Kenosha, they has caused their reality again to change immediately. So they are very much subject to the here and now in mm-hmm. terms of that. Uh, George Floyd was was Wisconsin a couple of months some ago. Problems. What was the what was the basketball? That part player? of the country. That part of the country has problems. You know what was Wisconsin, the basketball player? What was the young man? Our producer. What was the young man played for the Milwaukee Bucks that uh, Mil, um, the Milwaukee cops had on the ground at Walgreens and uh, everything. So we'll get that information from our producer. But the but Kenosha, the Kenosha cops in 2004 or five, I believe, executed a white boy in front of his kids, shot him in the head. Wow. In wow. First, you talk about a Sterling Brown, by the way. Yeah, Sterling, Sterling Brown. Brown. Yeah, right. Sterling okay. Brown. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, these folks have had on, problems for a man. long time. Hey, man, our producer better get on this game a little bit because, shoot, you take long, man. Scoop done scooped you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, late breaking, um, what we got is the Milwaukee Brewers have decided that tonight. they will not play. Good for they them. will not play. Good. Good. So now this is spreading to Major League Baseball. Scoop. What are we looking at, man? You know, and, and once again, this is our and our own sports, and we deal with these topics. We address these topics, and we have the foremost thought leaders in the areas of sports like Brandon Scooby Robinson. So, Brandon, what are we dealing with, man? You got Milwaukee Brewers have said they were not going to play. You got NBA players saying they're not going to play. What are we dealing with? And then we still have the verdict of Breonna Taylor – that's still hanging out there. It's a lot. It's a lot to digest. Um, and I think the fact that the Bucks set the tone in yeah. their respective city mm-hmm. yes. is great. But it doesn't stop at just boycotting games. It's conversation. That's the word of the day conversation now we got to move beyond i'm sorry brother we got to move beyond conversation but but here's the thing we got to move beyond conversation man seriously we've been conversing but the fact of the matter is is we still dying well let the brother explain well let him explain because should you explain that to me (laughs) man we we dying ain't nobody conversing they shooting I made you look. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the brother Nas. Um, I, I think at the end of the day, I think the conversation, like you said, um, is, it has to be more. But I think the NBA had its chance before they decided to go back into the bubble. And it seems that they've gotten ground again. Mm-hmm. Um, Hold on, I, B, B, real quick. How important is Mark Tatum right now? Second in charge of the NBA, brother man. Uh, Kappa man. Is he a Kappa? Yeah, he's a Kappa. I didn't how, know that. How important is Mark Tatum right now to Adam Silver as it relates to what's going on in the NBA? I'm not sure. Wow. Whoa. I'm not sure. Well, um, because the guy I that th- was at the front of the uh, forefront of the, the, the lottery, he was the face of the lottery. He was. But I'm not sure. And it's not a knock on him. I would imagine as a black male, he has perspective that he can give to Adam Silver. But I also think Adam Silver is well versed on black males because he's around them every day. Um, And so I think to single out just Mark Tatum, 
um, when there are other black males and females in well, his ear. The reason, I, the reason I brought up Mark Tatum, and he's my frat brother, so I, I okay. really love Mark Tatum. And he's been on R&R, and he's a friend of R&R. But the reason I brought up Mark Tatum was because um, he is the deputy commissioner for the National Basketball Association. He's the number two in charge. He's the highest ranking African-American sports comp- executive, executive mm-hmm. in the whole world. So and he's got an he's got a important role in these conversations. So I just wondered, from a standpoint, we give a lot of credit to Adam Silver, mm-hmm. but should we really be giving some credit to, to, to uh, Mark Tatum because – he literally is the man next to the man giving the direction for the league. Yeah, I think, I think, um, I mean, when Adam Silver decides to retire, Mark Tatum will be the first commissioner uh, of African American descent. Brilliant one. brother, man. Brilliant brother. Well, amazing wife. I mean, it, it's interesting but, because, um, it's interesting because here you have a, um, a company where, you have employees that are highly dissatisfied, but they're not highly dissatisfied with company policies or whatever. They are highly dissatisfied with something that the company cannot fix. But the company's got to pay for it by, with, with, with the loss. A bit for uh, here's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm saying if they were upset with the NBA, that would be another thing. That would be something that Mark Tatum and um, Adam Silver could deal with. But their dissatisfaction transcends the NBA. So my question is, as the NBA, what do you do? How do you, how do you address it when the issue is above and way outside of your purview? What I would or control. Say, B, I'm going to let you close it out, but I still say that I would still say that Adam Silver and Mark Tatum have done an amazing job. Yeah, for sure. Leading through this, this, this perilous. That's fine, Larry, but what does that do relative to the challenge and the issue that you have before you right now? Yeah, I think, have before the- I, I think you bring up a valid point about what you do. Okay, so the players decide they're going to boycott, right? Right. To me, that's no different than if we're in school and, the, and, and the, we tell the principal we're not coming in, but we're going to stand outside and just bo- protest all day. At the end of the day, teachers are, inside are still going to be grading papers. You still have that A or that F or that C. That you have. There's, there's, there's still protocol within place, but I think after I think after. Today, after the games today were canceled and, you know, potentially tomorrow the games are being canceled. I think that's when things start to really bubble up and it's like no pun intended. And you, and you say to yourself, like, OK, what's next? Right now, I think it's just the shock value. Like, you know, like the Bucks are up 3-1 over the Magic. That, that game today, game five, it won't, it's, not a, it's not a forfeiture. It's, it's a postponement. So the game will still take place if they resume. If not, then... The Raptors could become the NBA champions or the Bucks could end up becoming the champions because they had the best record in the NBA. Collective bargain agreement would kind of dictate in their favor that it would be the Bucks, though, because they had the best record in the league. But as it relates to what they can do, I don't think it has so much to do with position. That's like saying, OK, the Knicks got World Wide West. They got Leon Rose. Now they're going to win a championship because they got Tom Thibodeau. You still got to have players on the floor and the players on the floor ain't playing. Right. And so I'm I think jump it's, out there and say they ain't gonna play. I'm gonna jump out there and you, you heard think it it's here done? on R and R on sports. Done? I think I don't think they're coming back. I don't you think, think it's they're done. No, I don't think they're coming back. With what just happened to? No, I don't think they're coming back. Wow. Go ahead, Uncle H. That's my little Nostradamus prediction. Right. Well, I did. I did say that. I, I was interviewed by Footway News. Um, no, did you? Did and they asked me. Said it earlier. You read his. Article. I did not read. <laughs> you read his damn article. I, I you plagiarized. I, I you plagiarized it on Scoop yeah, B. Yeah, Scoop man, yeah. you got I'm, a Myers, and, and we didn't even know. I'm about. like the first lady. I plagiarized <laughs> the, the whole damn. <laughs> <speech>. <laughs> 
whole damn speech. Okay. Oh man, this is this is really deep. But we got to come back, man. Yeah, he's yeah, been yeah, away gotta... too long, man. He's been away way too long. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're gonna ask, ask you back, and it probably be sooner than you think. Right. Yes, sir. So, answer the call. I will. You got my name. <laughs> no. Let's make this happen, my cousin, man. See, we spell our name correctly. Mm-hmm. Robinson. Mm-hmm. You got that. You got the whole E R T thing. Going Sons on. of birds. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Robins. All right, Scoop B. We appreciate you being here on R and R on Sports, and uh, look forward to having you back. And yes, we'll be back for more R and R on Sports after this. Peace. Riffin on jazz. When two friends get together to kick it about jazz, it's called Riffin on Jazz. Catch us Riffin on Jazz every week right here on your favorite broadcast or podcast platforms. Riffin on Jazz on the Kazookian Network. Kazookian! Now right. it's time to say goodbye to all our family. M I C. See you real soon. Boy, you just changed K-E-Y. keys just like it was, wasn't nothing. Why? Because I don't like your ass. We, we went to a <laughs> real weird. Don't try to sing. Don't try to sing. You know, yeah, they did How you a big disservice I not putting you into music at a young age. Say goodbye. And, it's only, and you want to be musical. You you, you, to you what desire to be musical. Had. But it just ain't in you. <laughs> So anyway, memory. Hush. <laughs> Jeremy, turn his mic out, off, please. Okay, so um, shout outs. Mine, without hesitation, goes out to Jacob Blake. Jacob Blake, you are a strong young brother, obviously with a stronger will to live and survive and I pray for you man and say keep on come back come back to us come back to us anything that they say you can't do or won't be able to do they ain't in no control you can do anything including walk run or do whatever you used to do man we're praying for you that's a beautiful thing um I'm gonna shout out two 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 um professional sports franchise Mm -hmm. Milwaukee Brewers and the uh, Milwaukee Bucks, both of them said we ain't playing. Yeah, we ain't playing. And uh, I want to res- give a shout out to them because I thought this should have happened back with the Los Angeles Clippers and Donald Sterling. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that Chris Paul and um, that team that was assembled there and, and Doc Rivers really let us down. But but I say tonight and today. I respect Milwaukee Brewers. I respect um, uh, Milwaukee Bucks, and uh, and and the fact that they said, "Look here, we got a problem." That's you know, Doc said. Rivers. Doc Rivers went to uh, Marquette about forty yeah, he went miles to Marquette. away. Yeah. About forty miles away from uh, Kenosha, and um, I, you saw him, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. It is My his daddy was to. his daddy was a cop. Absolutely. His daddy was a cop and um you know that kind of emotion that's that's genuine that's mm-hmm. pure. Right. And uh wish him well but I don't think it's going to be interesting to see what other major so league your, base, your, your major prediction league is baseball teams you, do. Your prediction is that we will not see any more NBA. I going think the forward. NBA is done. I wow. think the bubble is done. I think the NBA is done. So that's my opinion. I'm with you. We see. All right. And we are with you every week, and we appreciate you being with us here on r r on Sports. Y'all take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Be well, back well, hold with on, us. man. Wait, man. You're going too fast. Now, listen, if you listen, miss anything. The producer said we got to go. you need to catch r r episodes, download the Kazookian app dun, at the App Store dun, or Google dun, Play. Dun, All right? Dun, 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 hey, man. Dun, dun. Listen. All right, Till next week. Holla. Later. You've been listening to a little R&R on sports, written and produced by Howard Robertson, Larry Robinson, recorded and mixed in Memphis, Tennessee.